the landlord rights. How many of you are landlords here? Just about everybody. Uh, I'm a former adjudicator of the Ontario Landlord Tenant Board, and now a paralegal who does primarily landlord tenant work. So I'm at the Landlord Tenant Board almost every day. And some of my clients are small landlords like yourself. Some of them are large property management companies, uh, large apartment buildings, etc. I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about fairness issues. And I want to talk about a pet peeve of mine, and that is that small landlords do not properly check and do credit checks and tenancy checks on prospective tenants. If ever a tenant comes to you to move into your place because you've got an ad on Craigslist or Kijiji, and they come in with cash for first and last, where do you think that cash came from? That's the rent. They're not paying the landlord. Be careful who you rent to. There's a couple of great stories that you can find in the paper if you just do some Google searches. Here's a story from the Toronto Sun last year. The Bentley driving tenant from hell. She was evicted in 2007, where I acted for her landlord. She was evicted in 2009, uh, where a lawyer acted for a different landlord. She was evicted in 2010 by me again. She was lucky enough to victimize a new landlord who happened to retain me. And I got a call a couple of weeks ago from a condominium property manager, I think a management company, of a condominium uh, in North York, saying they heard about this woman who just moved in, and is it true that I'd evicted her twice, and what can we do to get rid of her? She trashed, as far as I know for certain, three apartments, beautiful condos, and she left rent arrears on those three places of about $30,000 in total. The sad part is, anybody could have Googled her name or done a credit check and found out who she was, and you never would have rented to her. If you do a credit check, if you do an employment check, if you're careful about who you rent, half the problems disappear. Here's my next favorite. This is Nina Willis. Anybody read the Nina Willis stories? Right. Nina Willis from the Toronto Star, May 2012. Nina Willis seemed like the ideal tenant. And again, she was findable easily through court documents, through Google searches. She goes from landlord to landlord, stops paying her rent, gets evicted at the board eventually, at the landlord tenant board, but then she files appeals to the divisional court. And that will take you six months and 20,000 in legal fees to fight. Wouldn't it be nice if you simply didn't rent to Nina Willis? But small landlords aren't checking. They're renting to somebody because they see these people, because the pastor in your church says they're okay. It's a business. It's a hard business. It's a serious business. It's a highly regulated business. Too many people get into the landlord business as small landlords, as investors, forgetting that you're also business operators. If you don't want to learn the business, if you don't want to operate the business, don't be a landlord. It's far more than being an investor. And today, well, on Sunday, actually, we had a story in the Toronto Sun by the legal reporter, uh, Shanoff, Alan Shanoff. But today, on the front page of the National Post, uh, they did another story. And let me tell you about this predator. Here's today's post. Tenants abusing legal systems, says judge. Remarkable case. And I acted for the young woman who was the landlord. They went to the landlord tenant board with this scammer, this froster named Ronnie Hitty. And when they went to the board, he owed $7,200. Two months rent at $3,600 a month, renting a house. And he comes to the landlord tenant board and he hands them a check, her and her partner, says, here's the check, let's go in and withdraw the application in front of the judge. And they did. And the check was no good. So they then retained me, and I filed a new application against Mr. Hitty, and by that time he owed 10 8, 10,000 8, three months rent. And I'm driving down to the landlord tenant board that morning, around Young and St. Clair, for this hearing, afternoon hearing, I think, and my phone rings, and I pick it up. He says, Mr. Fine, it's Ronnie Hitty. 
I'm calling from New York. My plane's been delayed. I'd like you to consent to an adjournment. I said, Mr. Hay, with all respect, you're not in New York. Your plane is not late, and you owe $10,800. Mr. Hitty, can you pay your rent? Oh, yeah, it's not the rent, said Mr. Hitty. I can pay the money. I said, that's great, because the way the Landlord-Tenant Board works is, if I get an order today for the 10-8, plus the $107 application fee, as long as you pay it in 11 days, the order goes away. So, Mr. Hitty, you don't have any problem with me telling the judge that I've spoken to you, and you said you could pay the 10 8 and are consenting to this order. So I sort of put Mr. Hitty in the little box. He says, oh, no, no, no problem. I said, Mr. Hitty, I'm almost there now. Could you just send me a quick email? I can even show the judge that you're happy to consent to that order. Oh, no problem. I have the money. So, of course, he never sent the email. But the adjudicator gave me the order for 10 8 11 days to pay. So 11 days later, he files what's called a void motion at the landlord tenant board. He walks up to the counter, and the law permits a tenant to simply swear an affidavit that he's paid the landlord everything they owe as a result of the order and any new rent that may have come due. And you swear that affidavit, and the board cancels the eviction order with no proof that the money has been paid. This young woman, at that point, she was out at, um, I think like 13 6 was the rent amount to that point. $13,600. This young woman was losing everything she had. She had a mortgage to pay, a big mortgage to pay. So the board voids the order, and we get a copy of the void order in the mail. We know he hasn't paid. So we filed a set-aside motion to set aside his void order. It took a month a month to get back to the landlord tenant board for them to hear my set aside motion. And does Mr. Hitty show up with the set aside motion? Oh no. He sends a lawyer who says, Mr. Hitty's out of town, he'd like an adjournment. Of course I didn't consent to the adjournment. And the adjudicator granted my motion, lifted the stay of the order, and of course now we run down to the sheriff with the lifting of the stay order and the original order, so now the sheriff can enforce. You know how long the sheriff takes to enforce in Toronto? Once you give him an order, four weeks. Peel region, six or seven weeks. It's not like that in outlying regions. Instead of allowing landlords to file with commercial bailiffs, who the next day will get your tenant out, you have to wait four or five weeks in Toronto. And if the tenant files an appeal or a review, a crap appeal, devoid of any merit, and the tenant doesn't even show up for the review hearing, and then we go back to the sheriff and say, here's the order lifting the stay, the review is denied, the sheriff puts our eviction to the back of the four-week line. We might have been right at the top of the list, but now we're back at the end of the four-week line, and that's your government. That's the Ministry of the... That's the Ministry of the Attorney General. That's your government that doesn't give a damn about landlord rights. So we went to the sheriff and we gave him a copy of the order. I think it's the battery on this, but I'll just yell. We gave the sheriff a copy of the order, and a, ne a day later, two days later, Mr. Hitty filed an appeal to the divisional court. My client had to get a lawyer, spend about 20000 in legal fees, and finally the appeal was heard. Mr. Hitty didn't show up again. The judge, and this is where the story is interesting, the judge who heard the appeal lambasted not just Mr. Hitty, the serial scammer, but he was critical and lambasted the government of Ontario for allowing this sort of system that encourages tenants not to pay their rents and get away with murder. Do you know as small landlords, I'm not going to use this because it's not working, 